In 2022, a crack fantasy unit was sent to prison by a military court for putting together the best and worst teams in fantasy football. These men promptly escaped from the maximum security stockade to the hills of Donegal. Today, still wanted by the government, they survive as agents on the internet. If you got a bad team, if you've no clue what to do, and if you can find them, maybe you can listen to the Minus Four Podcast. <laughs> That was so good. <laughs> oh my god. New intro uh, like that every week. There we go. That's, that's welcome, brilliant. Welcome back. That is uh that is a live reaction to to our brand new intro. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the minus four FPL podcast, game week eleven special. Episode nine, game week eleven. Lads, how are we feeling? Cold. <laughs> I'm joined. I'm, I'm, jo- I'm joined tonight by the usuals, Ryan and Patrick, Kelly and Darren can't be here tonight due to work commitments. Uh, but we do have our very own first ever special guest on the minus four podcast, John. Lads, give John a round of applause. If any man knows anything about sc- obscure um, German football, it's John. Mann. <laughs> yeah, I try my absolutely, best. Absolutely, absolutely. John, you're very welcome. Um, yeah, last game week nine has has been and gone. Um, we're looking forward to game week ten already. Pa- I think Patrick's looking forward to the World Cup by the yeah. by the way well, he was talking last week. But happy I don't know. After I don't know. This week. Happy enough after yeah, this week. Hope, yeah, I'm glad everything's um, coming up now, guys. Well, it's about time you cheered up a little bit, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Yeah, right. Um, segment number one. Um, I, I still can't get over that intro. That's, that's absolutely, <laughs> he's so good. absolutely. I rattles. still can't get over it. He's uh, he's going a hundred miles an hour, but it's absolutely hilarious. So great to get that on the, great to get that on the intro and and outro as well. So that's great. Uh, Pat, do you want to take us through the the first segment here? What's who's first on the agenda for their? Uh, let's have a look 19. at let's have a look at ryan's team first so uh do you want to talk us through your team ryan yeah um so uh i've done a lot better than last last week anyway last week was a bit of a write-off for me anyway though um, i had a load of injuries and colliding fixtures and stuff like that um this week i went with uh pope and goals he got me two and then back three of salo but cancelo and james uh Midfield five of Sin Maximan, Anthony, Eberece, De Bruyne, and Vargino Neely. And then a front two of uh, Neil Mope and Erling Haaland. And yeah, a few things. Like, I'm, I'm happy I got 73 overall. It's great. No complaints with that whatsoever. Just the only thing was maybe Reese James obviously started on the bench for Chelsea. I mean, a load of people had him anyway. So, I mean, it wasn't the worst thing that could have happened. Yeah. Um, Cancelo just after Patrick talking rubbish about him last week came and got a yeah. nice 18 points. He must have heard you, he must have been watching actually. If you're watching again, Cancelo, I do love you. <laughs> uh, Saliba, Saliba's class, like, but I think Gabrielle's just a bit nervous these last couple of games. So, I mean, I'm not gonna, not gonna start jumping on Saliba's back just yet, although he's not gonna be playing fairly soon. So, we'll see. Uh, midfield actually really well I risked Sin Maximan because I knew he was going to be back anyway in the squad and he did come on but only with like 10 minutes left if he came on maybe maybe 5-10 minutes earlier he might have might have done something but then Martinelli got me 12 De Bruyne 6 Eze got me 10 and then Anthony keeps keeps on scoring in the Prem and then up front Haaland with a uh, a nice wee 12 and then Neil just not getting any service I can't be mad at him but I'm sorry Neil you, you let me down man <laughs> I, act- I actually love the, the Eze um, differential on Zaha obviously didn't have the cash for Zaha was it Ryan was that what you were going for um, yeah so I got rid of it was Leon Bailey I got rid of and I was looking through a load of players and I wasn't kind of Zaha was one of the ones that kind of I was like, oh, maybe I'll get Zaha in, but then I think I was like short by like not even that much. But then I was like, Eze is a cheap wee man, and I was like, he hasn't scored this season. He's got a few assists, but I was kind of looking back in fixtures and seeing he was getting a load of shots off and stuff. And I was like, okay, I'll bring him in. And then I was in a call with Patrick actually during that game, and 
I was like, oh, Eze just doesn't seem like he's doing anything at all. And literally, as yeah. I finished that sentence, I just yeah. screamed, Ebreche! <laughs> it was a fantastically worked <laughs> goal as well. Thank God for me, Zaha, being on the being on the other end of the assist. So that definitely helped the <laughs> helped the points. Anthony's yeah, also a great shot, Ryan. That's, uh, you got yeah. him in straight away, and he's returned every time. He's got. Yeah, he's so, actually averaging a goal a game since he landed. At, well, in the league, anyways, he's in the league, a goal yeah. a game. Hmm. It's fantastic, like just what you want. Yeah, I brought him in. I didn't have him for the game against Arsenal. I, I can't remember who I had for that, but uh, I got him in straight after that. I was like, I'm going to take a punt on him, and he scored in the last two two weeks. And uh, yeah, he's he's been very impressive since he's joined United. To be fair to him, but it's just hard for him, I think, because the rest of the team are shit. <laughs> yeah well i think not, i'm actually not that impressed with him either but he does like he does score so we can't argue with that if he cuts inside in his left foot man that's going top bins every he must, time he must be really <laughs> yeah. outperforming his xg but as well he's uh, he, he's yeah. playing a lot um more passive than he did with Ajax because mm-hmm. I remember watching for Ajax last season in the Champions League and stuff like he'd get the ball and he would just run run at players like he got a load of assists and I think Haller scored like nearly 10 goals in that group stage and, not, and he probably assisted all of them he's just like taking lads on yeah. cutting inside scoring it was he's great mm-hmm. so I, I feel like we will see that side to him but he's just kind of taking it handy so far good to I have like um, St Maximum back as well Ryan sorry yeah, delighted. He looked sharp when he came on. Obviously, he's obviously not 100% fit, but he got the ball straight away, took it around a few lads, the usual, and then he nice through ball for Shoss of Valentin, who, <laughs> who's crossed. It's Joe Linton, for those of you who don't speak Irish. Um, <laughs> but uh, his cross, obviously, uh, unfortunately, wasn't going into the back of the net before it took the deflection, so St. Maxman didn't get a cheeky assist, but you look, I think he'll be a good one to have now. Because he can cause damage against anyone. We saw him tear Kyle Walker apart against City. So if he can do that to Kyle Walker, he can do it to anyone. Very true. Very true. Very nice. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> What's uh, Who's next on the agenda there, Patrick? Let's go to John's team, our special guest. Oh. With a nice uh, 87 points this week. Tell us about <laughs> that, John. Jeez. Um... I thought I had more if I had been a bit more aware and put Cucurella on Oof. for cash. But yeah, I um, decided there probably a couple of weeks back I wasn't doing well, so I just decided to go as much attacking as I could, pick the two and farm teams with City and Arsenal. And yeah, I went with Trip here because set piece taker. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't get to watch any of the games, but I knew I knew from week one, well, before week one, I've been used to kind of test that I've been saying for ages how much Haaland was going to be a beast. I wish I, listen, I, wish I listened one. to you, John, to be honest. I didn't have yeah. Haaland week one, and I wish I did. I did, yeah. man. So, Captain him as soon as possible. And really, if it wasn't for him, I'd be completely dead in the water. But this probably <laughs> has been my best week. It was probably 40, 50 points every week up until about two weeks ago. So, yeah, I'm happy enough of that. Can I get, get Martin? Probably could have got Sack in instead of Martinelli, but 12 points, I'm not going to complain. Absolutely not. It does say... Um... It does say Allison got eight points here. I'm not sure he actually did, though, did he? Um, no. Definitely, definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> you, you may be hacking, John, or it may just be my app that's glitched out. Is that, uh, yeah. Does that happen for anyone else's apps, by the way? I, funny I, enough, I funny, enough, actually... funny enough, it only happens with those uh, Northern Irish apps, I wonder. What's the... Did, um, did Danny... I was going to say, Danny, it said Danny Ward got eight points on my app, so I think it's my app was a bit broken. No, <laughs> I'm actually, I'm on 81 points here. Um, there you go. Yeah, that, that would yeah, sound maybe more you're like it. Up, you're making up for the difference between Cucurella and Cash there. This is what you should have got, yeah. This is what you should have yeah. got. Well, 86. <laughs> yeah. well that, that's, that's brilliant, to be fair. The, the only one thing that I'll say, obviously, you know what I'm going to say next is game week 12. What's your plan for that? Because obviously we can see six players there in that starting 11 that won't play game week 12. What's your plan? Are you wildcarding? Or... Um, wildcard already done. Get rid of half the team. Oof. So probably have to play some type of free hit. But I'll probably bite, if I have a good game week this week, I'll bite the bullet as much as I can. Yeah, or you could like triple captain like Trippier and hope he like just gets you a load of points. <laughs> <laughs> Trippier, <Havertz. laughs> triple captain Havertz. Well, that's it. Like, is obviously free hitting will take away that 
the possibility of um you know like a, a shit game week come down the line or something like that with um fixture cancellations but it also helps keeping the arsenal players in because the arsenal players after the wild card from what i'm seeing have really good fixtures you know as the yeah. city obviously because yeah. they hammer everyone but yeah, yeah it's, de- <laughs> it's definitely an option that a lot of people won't have because a lot of people will be working their way down to two city players and one arsenal player i would imagine and then just sticking them on the bench so you will be one step ahead of the the guy and getting the arsenal lads back in like the, the likes of martinelli and jesus and those kind of lads so yeah at least um i mean i went for a couple of center backs i mean i think i had van dyke in for the first couple of weeks and i just yeah i had to kind of change it over and go just put in the full backs that's the only way you're going to get points in the back line. Yeah. Either either yeah. that or having a big defender like Dunk or yeah. Webster, you know, those kind you, of lads that are You mentioned from... Dunk. Last time you mentioned Dunk, he scored no goal the next I match, did. man. I did. I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, had, I had Robert Sanchez in that game week. I mean, <laughs> yeah. And I wouldn't mind, but Robert Sanchez had a good game, and Dunk just absolutely shot at him. I still stand by the pick. Though. To be fair, no, Dunk, Dunk's, Dunk's, Dunk's a good lad. To be fair, bring with the informed defence, and from the look of the fixtures, I think the fixtures are actually uh, looking on the good side of things again. So the likes of um, you know Dunk, Webster, Gross, uh, Trossard are all kind of looking like viable picks again. So that is good, definitely good to see. Mm-hmm. Um, Thanks to Mill John. Um we'll move on, sure. Who's up who's up next, Pat? It's me. What do you think? Oh. <laughs> Eighty one points, same as John. Uh pretty happy this week. Um I'll go through my team. I have Pope and Nets, um, and Cancelo, Trippier, Nico Williams, and Perisic in the back line. Uh Kevin De Bruyne, Andreas, Martinelli, uh, all in midfield, and then Holland. Uh, Skimaka and Kane. Uh, so pretty good. All my attackers uh, picked up points and only three blanks. So really good week this week. And uh, my uh, um, my transfer last week was to bring in Skimaka for Mitrovic. And uh, uh, it actually came through very well with nine points. So very happy with that. He could have had a lot more as well. I was yeah. watching the game and he definitely he could have had a lot more. He missed a big chance. Two, two. Yeah. I didn't see the sitters. He had a header that the keeper saved, I know, and then uh, I didn't yeah. see that. But it's a good sign that uh, he's getting uh, lots of chances and points, so I'm pretty happy to have him. Uh, they are playing tonight, uh, West Ham, so hopefully he doesn't pick up any injuries or anything like that. And uh, he's got a nice wee fixture at the weekend playing Southampton. So really like Skamaka um, going forward. Also... Um, Andres Pereira, shout out to him coming out. Uh, had to start him this week because my bench is uh, very bad. But uh, <laughs> he is. He always he the three times I've actually played him this year, he's returned. So you really, yeah. really can't ask for more than that from the Chief boys. Um, so I'm very happy with Andres there. Nico though was actually benched in that match, uh, so we only got one point. Um, so something to be concerned about there maybe especially in week 12 i think a lot of us are going to be starting nico that week yeah i don't have a big nico. worry with mine as well but even even on your team there pal it's an 81 point team but could have so easily been you know you could have knocked that week absolutely out of the park because pope obviously uh conceding a penalty mm-hmm. that would have been an added you know eight to ten for points for well, year. yeah yeah, could have added an eight to ten points for your Newcastle defense. Ah, Nico yeah. Williams and Perisic both not starting. You know, pair like a Perisic would have kept a clean sheet if he started. Mm-hmm. You know, so you're you're definitely on the right track from being an absolute shambles last week to to being in good position again this week. Like it's it's a weird it's a, team, is what it is. It's because there's so it's uh it's it's quite different from what a lot of people have. Um, like there's no Madison mm-hmm. or Bowen or um some Zaha, of the Zaha. Zaha. Or no, no, mm. no palace. So there's a lot. It's quite different. So it's a risky move now. But um, when you've got boys like Andreas scoring your points and Skamaka, it's really, uh, it. it's really good. Cool. Like it's a good it works, differential. It works. Like 
Yeah. And yet you have Bailey as well to come back and um Sinistera obviously back from his ban, so you're, you're starting <laughs> yeah. to look quite starting to look quite healthy again. Perisic seems to have been rested again, so I don't you know, know you're, you're, what the crack with I'll have to I'm probably gonna bench Sinistera this weekend again. Ugh, but then I don't know what to do with Nico Williams. I'll probably just I might just play Sinistera against Arsenal and um, hope he does something. Yeah. Nico Williams didn't start the last two games now, I believe, so he's No, to... just the last one. He definitely he started the What's one before it? that. Maybe he came off for Aurier then, so yeah. I'm just getting some word through from my sources here and uh Skimaka is actually on the bench tonight, so that's good. Brilliant. It's good news, yeah. Good news. He'll probably yeah, come on and score news. the winner again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, better. let's move on to let's move on to your teammate, Dan. Tell us what you think uh Think of this seventy three yeah. points, not bad. The um, same as me, man. Yeah, there we go. Um, two eighty one pointers and two seventy three pointers. But no, to be yes. fair, it could have been a lot better, and it could have been a lot worse. Um, my obviously Pope and Trippier, um, giving away a penalty, which I did, I thought was a bit. I was a bit I was, harsh. I thought it was extremely soft. So, like, that's in my eyes, that's three clean sheets for Pope ruined by you know a, like three silly single goals like single occurrences so I still believe the the Newcastle defense is good it's just kind of underperforming it's uh it's stats I suppose Pope for two Trippier for seven Van's just a bonus point machine uh Cancelo for 18 really really dug me out of a hole I actually watched that game in its entirety and just like one once you think he's starting to like not get into as many attacking positions. He goes and pulls a game like that out of his arse. So, yeah. absolutely delighted with him. Um, Reese James was raging. He didn't start actually. Kept a you know a goal, you know a goal and an assist and a clean sheet in the Champions League midweek the week before, and then doesn't even start. Comes on for a painful one pointer. So, <laughs> and now and is now injured. So it's uh, I really no idea what to do with him. Could well, move him on. I was going to say, at least you know your transfer now this week, you would have to say. Well, that's it, yeah. I was I was going to roll the transfer and leave myself a bit more options for game week 12 with the blanks uh, for Arsenal and City, but it looks like I'll probably have to move Rhys James immediately. To who? I'm not sure. Uh, possibly a Perisic or someone, maybe. Uh, I really don't know. Um, Rhys James only getting injured last night is kind of... Um, haven't really had the chance to assess it a huge amount, but... Any any transfer I will do will be definitely Rhys James related. But uh, moving on to the midfield, we have Zaha for five. Uh, not as good as I thought he would perform. Kind of, I only saw the highlights of this game now, but didn't look fantastic. As did Eze. They just didn't really seem to be uh, fluid in that attack in any sense. But you know, if you play shite and still pull a five pointer out, then I'm not too not too fussed. Bowen scored a lovely penalty. Apart from that, didn't really do a huge amount. Um, Madison, very disappointing with his one point. I thought Leicester were kind of looked like they're back to their old ways. Um, but we'll stick with him for now because I have no really no real other option. De Bruyne for six. Happy enough, keeps chugging along. Um, Andreas scored a worldie for six points. I was delighted because he was my first sub, first auto sub for Mitrovic mm-hmm. being injured. Alan for 12, and uh, the new sign and Dominic Solanke coming in for 8 points. I actually took Martinelli and Isaac out for Zaha and Solanke. Um, or like Martinelli, um, obviously scoring 12 points at the weekend, and Zaha and Solanke scoring 13 points in total. So yeah. thankfully, the, thankfully the blow wasn't as bad as, uh, as I thought it would be. Did you have to do a um, minus 4 for that? No, I had the two free transfers, so I was I definitely wasn't uh I was I was actually gonna just take one, maybe a Pope to Guaita or something, but they conceded anyway, so mm-hmm. it's pretty happy. Seventy three points, still chugging along. Green arrow. Um Green Arrow from about four hundred K to about or I think it was four hundred and eighty K down to about three hundred and fifty K or so. So from being one point five million three weeks ago, I'm starting to slowly build those green arrows up so the green arrow is all i want to see at the end of the at the end of the week so as long as we're moving in the right direction i'm happy out 
Very good. Nice. Yeah. Team's looking good. Um, and uh, I would say there's um, there's a lot of you yeah, have your team pretty much set up for game week twelve as well. So no wild, uh, major concerns for you. I don't think. Shall we have a yeah. look at um the other two lads' teams? I know they're not here, but we can briefly touch on them. Yeah, we'll run through them briefly here. Yeah, this is Darren's team. Uh, he got sixty six. Saliba and Pope and Trippier. Uh, and Perisic all well I suppose Trippier did return but he also had Cancelo so uh, and he had Zaha Rashford Almiron who was a good shout he's uh he's yeah. been the if uh, I think one of us had him as their our cheeky pick a few weeks ago and he's he's been um yeah. he's been with quality and De Bruyne so and Tony and then Haaland so yeah he actually did he did decently well there he got uh, a good few um Pretty much all of his lads returned, so I don't, I don't think you can have too many yeah. complaints. Yeah. Rashford yeah. was quite hard done by with that penalty as well, yeah. or that um, the goal or the VAR, the AR, I thought, as well. Yeah. So that could have easily been, you know, an extra five points maybe. and a couple of bonus. So, you know, he had the, he had the <laughs> gift sent into the group chat uh, before <laughs> yeah. they got rolled out as well, which makes it celebrating funny. the goal before it's confirmed is one of the best, is one of the yeah. grave mistakes you can make in a group chat because he just got slated for the next ten minutes afterwards. Ethan Ethan Pinnock helped him out big time as well, playing that through ball to Almiron as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like it's it it is fine margins. Uh, like obviously Tony getting that goal and doing very little else from a handy penalty, so. You take it's, that though. It's extremely fine margins, but I think he can be happy enough with that. Yeah, and here's um here's Killian's team. Uh, he only got sixty <laughs> points, unfortunately. What are you laughing right for? Back, well, the right back, just. Yeah. I can just yeah, I just see Trent Alexander Arnold like that lad is. <laughs> I think he's only returned in two matches this season. I think he's he against that, Bournemouth and uh... he had that eighteen or seventeen point game against Bournemouth, and I think he might have picked up a four or five pointer somewhere else. But that's their only his only returns all year. This goes to show you he was a mainstay in everyone's teams in past years, and now he's now he's just a poison chalice. Ah, yeah, he's um. To be fair, he like has... a lot of people still had him in because he's still like one of the most creative mid sort of defenders, creating chances and yeah. Um, look, you never would have got Trent in for his defensive qualities anyway, so. I don't. I don't hate the fact no. that he kept him in, but yeah, he's I think. Gonna play, he's gonna play. I think if you see him as a seven point five million midfielder, more so than anything, because yeah. that's, that's essentially what he is. Like, yeah, <laughs> he did have Castagna though in defence, which was uh, very cheeky. That's good shot. Yeah, he, uh, yeah. He got subbed off before Leicester conceded, so he got the clean sheet and a Big bonus brain. one. So Big brain. That. And actually, that that says a lot about someone when they can get subbed off. You know, obviously, before the two goals goes in, he's still mm-hmm. on a bonus point after getting subbed off. You know, that's it goes to show you how much he is on the ball and how, yeah. how productive he is. You know, yeah. I remember I had him in the first season they signed him. This is when I played fancy last, maybe two years ago. I got him in straight away and he returned for me like the first five weeks. He was getting double figure points. He was just getting assist, assist, clean sheets. Like, yeah. I was the same with James Justin. It was just a bonus point machine that year he broke through. Uh, mm. So, like, as we were saying last week, it's great to have other options in, in defence. Obviously, obviously, he had Saka there for 15 points as well. That's because uh, Microfish didn't play. Oh, Mitrovic <laughs> didn't play, so Saka came on. That's mad. Make Microfish yeah, was God. injured, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Killian and his Killian and his autocorrect never worked too well for these for these foreign. Oh, FBL I players. I had some laugh at that man. It was so funny. <laughs> but yeah, that's brilliant. Sixty points still stays within touch. Yeah, still above average. Just about of the rest of us. Yeah, that's it. Is it's probably a it's probably just. He's probably holding rank, if not maybe a tiny, tiny green arrow, but he's that's all uh, you want as well. Hot on the heels of you, John, I think. Oh. Yeah, he is, yeah. And I'm actually just after getting above Darren there as well, so I'm finally moving up one a wee bit. And, it's uh, all it's all to play for in the in the fairy league then, so the, wood, yeah, the, the race for to... the wooden spoon is heating up. Yeah. My one cr- criticism of Killian's team, though, is, and I said it to him a few times, his very first podcast, he says Jansen is not leaving that team all season, and he's not there. And he's, <laughs> he's sold him. 
Well, he is injured for a while. To be it fair. doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. No, he said he wasn't no, leaving no, no. all season. He said he wasn't leaving. I don't care if he's injured or if he's dead. He stays in that team, man. He still has a few <laughs> meme picks. He still has Polina. So he still has <laughs> Jensen there. So, you know, Killian is keeping the memes alive. But Killian anyway, is actually focusing on his FPL this year, which is good to see. Mm-hmm. But so anyways, spreadsheets it. But anyways, we'll move on. Um. I suppose I'll I'll go to you first, Patrick, in terms of you know your future plans, your game week eleven um, plans in terms of you know obviously in this week, but how you're planning towards game week twelve that that blank game week. How are you how are you planning on navigating it? Um, so I'm kind of glad I kept Martinelli. Um, watching that Spur or uh, sorry Liverpool match, um, I am very glad I kept him. Because, and he's just if he keeps you know going the way he's going, like he's he's by far the best uh, option at that price. And apart from the blank Arsenal's fixtures are pretty good, so I'm probably not going to get rid of him. Uh, so I will probably downgrade Kevin De Bruyne actually. Uh, next week. Um, Interesting. To, um, I think I might go. This is I'm probably going to roll the transfer this week. Um, and put out yeah. you know pretty shitty team, but. I do want to have De Bruyne for this week, um, but next week I'll probably downgrade De Bruyne to Trossard, and then maybe bump up uh, Patterson to a more expensive, slightly more expensive defender. That leave me a lot of money in the bank over the next few weeks to sort of bring in some of the sort of mid-priced uh, midfielders. I think I think that's going to be my plan. Mm-hmm. Um, I like it. Probably going to bring in the likes of. Um, don't know. I mean, depending on the fixtures, probably will look to get one of the Palace players in, either Eze or Zaha. And then, up, or even um, Branchetti might be a good shout. Um, yeah, hey man. He scored in the past few games. He might be a wee cheeky pick for some of you. Um, yeah. Pretty, uh, that's probably what where my team, the direction my team is trending. Nice. Is and, that your and, cheeky pick, French Eddie? Yeah, yeah. And in, ter- in terms of your one week punt, what what are, you, what are you going for for game week eleven? What what t- what players appeal to you? Um, the one I ha- it's kind of boring to be honest. Normally, I I I'm no Killian. Like I don't come up with like mad picks. It's actually I've got two cheeky picks that I've sort of highlighted. Um. So the first one is Veltman, who Josh, uh, sorry, jo- John Mack. Josh, Josh. Josh Mack. He's cheating you know, on you, John. John, you have, you have Veltman. Um, yeah. That, that, that'd be my cheeky pick. Um, why is it that you brought him in? Um, cheap man, just felt like squad. Mm-hmm. Nothing else. Not going to pretend. <laughs> well, I can't, you can't argue there, like. When you compare him to... Um, Dunk, uh, who is an own gold magnet, and um, <laughs> he gets slightly too soon, too sli- soon, Patrick. He gets, too he, soon. He gets slightly more um, sort of uh, expected sort of goals and assists from Veltman. Uh, so I would probably pick him, and I don't think the you could look at someone like definitely a Brighton defender, someone like Estepinian. Is he yeah. nailed though? It's hard to say. Um, I like what about Dunk. I could go for Dunk, man. <laughs> I mean, he's probably more likely to score a header than Veltman, but um, he's also well, that's it. more prone to yeah. score a wee header into his own net. Your payoff there, and I was actually saying it when I was considering Dunk, is that Veltman gets more of the ball as a ball playing centre back. Yeah, and Dunk gets the Dunk gets the headers and the clearances and. You know the the tackles that kind of crack, but Veltman will have your Veltman will be on top of the bonus point metrics if mm-hmm. if Dunk doesn't if Dunk doesn't do something major, you know. So it's yeah, it's six to one, half a dozen to the other. You know, Dunk usually does score five six headers a season, but Veltman might chuck along with those you know one two bonus points every every couple yeah. of weeks and make make yeah. up the difference that way. So I think uh, it's what I think it's whatever one you want to aim for. Yeah, he's the guy. He's probably the standout for me in the Brighton defense. Um, and then I would, 
I would actually, if if I had the funds and it was just like a free hit, I'd probably punt on um, Firmino. You know, because that's that's form. actually uh, one. Yeah. That's actually one player that I wanted to mention. Uh, before we wrapped up, this was, and we may as well touch on it now. Is Roberto Firmino mm-hmm. with those with those injuries? Like, obviously, we all watched the game against Rangers last night. I hope. Um, and even in his previous games, he's just, he seems to be the main man. They seem to be yeah. pushing Darwin out wide now, out on the left side, um, and letting Firmino and Salah interchange between themselves. I think it's a lot better balance to that Liverpool forward line than mm-hmm. they've had before. And it makes, number one, it makes Firmino more appealing, but number two, I feel it makes Mo Salah, you know, obviously he scored a hat trick. It's, you know, it's probably. It's, I know it's only a one-off game, but I think Salah actually getting into those central positions, it's game over for defences. Like, so it's it's someone that I might be considering further down the line. Just right away, possibly not. No, but I I, I think I think that I'm probably waffling here, but Nunez seems to hog all the space when he's in the middle, but when he's out on the left, Firmino and Firmino in the middle. Firmino is more aware of space in that sense. So he'll mm-hmm. drop out and let Salah tuck in behind. Whereas with Nunez just doesn't have that um I suppose like false nine play about him. He's yeah. just uh he's a runner, he runs in behind, and Salah doesn't get that space unless it's, you know, a final ball uh out on the wing or a rebound or something like that. So Yeah. Um I enjoy I know it's Rangers now, their their defense was god awful, but uh, definitely, definitely a bit more. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> best right back yeah. as well, according to yeah, apparently, apparently. But anyways, best um, best I've seen of Salah this season, and I've de- definitely makes Firmino a little bit more attractive. The money probably isn't there for him for a lot of people, but someone to consider, I suppose. Um, ah, sure, we'll move on. I suppose, uh, John Mack, your game week eleven plans. You're telling us about your team there, but what's your What's your next move? Um, well, I think having Allison in that in a game against City might not be the best bet. Either he's going to make a lot of saves, right, no. or he's going to concede a load of goals. That's, that's one of the two. Like, that's um, it. Yeah. I think if Liverpool play Joe Gomez on the right, they might be a wee bit better. But I still think Haaland will have. I don't know whatever's going on with Van Dijk at the moment. Haaland could just have just run right there. Like, um, mm-hmm. Foden and De Bruyne are going to make chances. And Haaland's probably going to score, so that's, I'm going to stick with that. Stick with the Arsenal. I'm probably the only person might put a different keeper in. And I'm probably the only person with every player playing away this week. Oh, I do love playing away. <laughs> <laughs> I love playing well, away days, so can't blame <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so here, tell me this, John. If you were to bring in the keeper now instead of Allison, who would you who would you go for? Um. Probably just going to put Travers sub Travers in. There's no point in making the transfer for that. So if it's zero points. If it's zero points, it's zero points. But so you're happy to take. So you're happy to take his zero then, or you're happy just to stick with Allison? It's going to be a tight. I probably get a call at the weekend. Danny okay. Ward's a good shoot. Uh, yeah, I've already <laughs> made transfers, so that's my only problem. But I can't remember who because I met them so early last week. Okay, yeah, yeah. fair enough. Fair enough, and. Um, and yeah, so obviously you mentioned having three Arsenal and three City. You're you're still firm on the free hit for week twelve. I think so. I'll see how I go this week, and then yeah. I'll make it. There's no point in planning too far ahead yet. You'd have to do some dissecting. You'd have you're talking twelve transfer points or three transfers just to just to yeah. fix that. Uh, that I suppose, but yeah. Sometimes just you just do it. Sometimes you just got to take a minus sixteen. Oh God, or in no. Darren's case, a minus twenty. You're a minus twenty. Yeah. <laughs> his, yeah his, nickname, his nickname, his nickname in the group chat was minus twenty for about nine months. I'd say last year. Oh God's sake! He's brilliant. He must have panicked really quickly. He did. I think it was. Yeah. We. I don't know if we had a money tournament last year. Is mm-hmm. what we usually do between the five of us. Is we just have you know loser pays for a meal and a few pints or something, but. I think I actually think Darren was like 
really struggling towards the end and wanted to chase a double game week or something, just took a minus 20. <laughs> I know you made a loss on that, I'm pretty sure. Probably did, yeah. I don't think there was any thought behind it, Adan, to be honest. I think it was just... Could have been. Shooting. He could have been, yeah. He could have been chasing her. It could it was have a shot in the dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think was... sometimes you're better. You got to stay in path. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes if you think too much about it, you might take in player, take out players that... I that's what I was doing at the start. I was just thinking too much about players that maybe might do this and might do that. And then I just said, oh, well, might as well just go with... Yeah. Three, that's two true. teams anyone would play the best, and that's it. Keep it simple, man. Mm-hmm. Keep it simple, yeah. stupid. Yep. Michael Scott said that. <laughs> yes. Um, Lafferty, you're next. Um, um, your transfer plans, please. So, uh, Johnson, he's probably the one player that has all his players playing away from home. I'm pretty sure all I have all of mine except one are playing away from home as well. I'm gonna have but, to uh, check. I'm gonna have to check mine as well here. But uh, with Rich James probably being injured, I've got Perisic to come on anyway, so he's playing at home. But uh, I'm in the same boat as John with the Arsenal and City. I've got five, I've got three City players and two Arsenal players. So I, depending on how well I do in this game week, I might have to use the free hit as well. But uh, I have made a sub, um, a sub, a transfer, and I got rid of Isaac because we don't know when Isaac's going to come back. So it's like there's no point in having him just hanging around. Yeah. And Crystal Palace have some great fixtures coming up. And Patrick mentioned them earlier, but French Eddie has come into my team. Oh wow! You always hit. You always hit me with those. Like you know, it's not. It's not someone I plan on bringing it. No, I've already brought him in. Actually, I was yeah. Just, yeah. No, he's there. He's there. Just, no, he's, oh, he's there. He's there. Because the, I, because I know I like I've obviously I'm a big Celtic fan. I know what Eddie can do. Like when he's on form, like he's unplayable. He's got great dribbling, good finishing. Like he's good at link and play and stuff. And with the fixtures Palace have coming up as well, they've got a, probably the best run of fixtures I think right now. Mm-hmm. And with That's him, true. he scored. He scored in the last match and he scored against Chelsea as well. And Vieira was talking, was giving him high praise as well, saying he thinks he's going to kick on from here now. So hopefully he comes in and does the business. Um, and apart from that, then I think my team is more or less going to. Stay the same starting ways. Hopefully, Anthony can grab a goal against Newcastle, and Saint Maximin can grab a goal against United. And actually, no, I don't know because I want Pope to keep a clean sheet too. Maybe you can save a penalty. Maybe you can save a penalty or something. I don't know. Maybe you can save- oh, that's it. Like, oh, every chance. time you have, every time you have a player playing against each other, you always want to bench mm-hmm. one. And it um, just never, never works out that way. Then obviously I've got Cancelo, De Bruyne, and Haaland. I think I think said he will beat Liverpool. I don't know if they'll keep a clean sheet or not because you know Liverpool are. I mean they're not playing great, but maybe mm-hmm. that in saying that game against the uh, Rangers last night, maybe Salah's found his confidence again or something like that. Maybe he'll come in and get a cheeky wee goal or something. But well, you never know. Man. Then I've got Martinelli against Leeds. He's just been on fire this season. Um, and hopefully Salah can keep a clean sheet as well. But in terms of captain, I don't know. Like obviously everyone's captain in Haaland, but you know I'm fine. That's a bit boring. I don't know. I, I, I want to. I want to switch it over. But I might. I might captain French Eddie and be a bit cheeky. Like oh, that's outrageous, man. Against the Leicester defense as well, which hasn't been. And against Danny Ward, normal. if you just kick the ball at him, he's going to go in the back of the. No offense to you, Danny Ward, if you're watching. Like, but you are an NPC goalkeeper. <laughs> <laughs> but, to, to be fair to be fair the first one he couldn't do anything about but the second one he nearly jumped out of the way of the ball like, uh, that's but, actually yeah. being harsh to um, NPCs yeah that's actually yeah and then in, 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 in terms of like a cheeky pick then um and again with Palace, Palace having the great fixtures and stuff. And I was actually mentioned to Pat the last day when they were playing. I was like, I was between two people to get in, and he actually got an assist. It was at Elisa, and I think Elisa is a tricky wee player in the wing. He creates chances and stuff. He could be a good one, but also Graham Potter has started giving Connor Gallagher a lot of games at Chelsea, and we know what Connor Gallagher can do when he's on form. He's actually got a goal. Was it not the last match or the match before? And if yeah, he can, got a goal against can, Palace. If he can find his form, like he's he's a good player to have, like because he does yeah. get goals. Yeah, all, he likes to move forward as well. He's quite positive. Those three players, Ryan, are all. Um, yeah, he's probably the cheapest at five point three, and then OSA yeah, five point four, as a five point five, all cheap ways. Maybe not. You're doubling up. I'm not sure that's the best play. Uh, but 
one of those guys. You never know. Um, on I'm one of those day. guys, man. I I don't I I do what I do. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. Who knows what's the best what's the best plan? Yeah. No. If we all knew, we'd all be top top. Well, I mean, you did say top ten K every year, like you know. Patrick did yeah. say to get rid of Cancelo last week, and he got eighteen points. So that is that is true. Nobody that should have brought true. in Kai Havertz. And I made sure I got the clip from last week as well. Yeah. <laughs> right. If you get the clip, you'll see that uh, Aidan actually um, stole my idea for last week. Uh, so and he actually just stole it flat out. Didn't even like give me credit That's... either. He's like, that is look at this great true. idea I've had. I've uh, took uh, Solanke in and subbed Zaha out and. Um, Look at look at look at what a great idea it is, and I'm like, duh! I said that on the podcast. I didn't even remember you saying it until you showed me the clip. So exactly, that, that's, she, that's yeah, quite yeah. that's quite harsh. Clearly, wasn't listening. <laughs> but uh, I'm afraid I'm I'm I'm, a, I'm sad you didn't take your own advice, but I suppose. But taking in Skimaka for for his yeah. nine pointer that kind of paid off in that in its own sense as well. Yeah, I would so next, I, week, next week finish too. I was going to do that. Was. Um, I, I was in the shop and uh, I was about I was flipping a coin um with the, my brother and um, he flipped the coin for me and uh, you know we didn't actually have a coin so we just used Siri but we, we flipped a <laughs> flipped a digital coin and uh, we came up heads so we took in Skimaka instead of doing that. Uh, minus four to bring in um so uh so blanky and um <laughs> Zaha. Uh, I was I was actually I was laughing as well because Griffin was giving me grief in the first half of the game saying oh so blanky you know wasn't me shite so far it was me it was me I, was I, it you? I made sure to put so far as well because I'm like he's probably going to do something in the second yeah. half. So I was like so far just to be safe. But if all people the score, you've got freaking Philip Billing and Ryan Christie, not the most prolific freaking goal scorers of all time. No, like, no. <laughs> definitely yeah. not the most talented of players. But like Christie had about ten fair, shots as well. Like well, Christie, yeah. Christie needs ten shots to get the the ball anywhere near goal. So there's that. Mr. Christie, he's great at hitting the first man. <laughs> Well, that's True. it. If there's a corner or a free kick, that first man's getting fucking concussed. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, that's that's just some salty Celtic fans. Um, she a point zero. Yeah. Every shot he takes. And yeah, lads, that's Danny Ward out of the equation for a for a special guest as well. So thanks for that. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Danny. I'll text um, him after the match, or not after the match, <laughs> after the podcast. Oh, God. Um, ah, anyways, last and certainly least, uh, my own team. Um, it's probably going to line out pretty similar. Uh, Reese James obviously injured for at least a week, so I need to make that decision whether he whether he stays or goes. Um, if he go, if, you know, I, I could keep him. Um, I think it's only a one a one week thing, but you know, game week twelve, I believe, is midweek, so he wouldn't have a big turnaround, and he'd you know yeah. he'd be he'd be cutting it close for game week twelve. Um, I'm actually in a bit of a shitty situation myself. Um, I have my triple city players that I plan on putting on the bench, but the one letdown is obviously Reese James is injured, but. Nico Williams is now out of favour and not not in Forest team. It seems. I don't know about and that. I think he might have just got the one game benching because he could have been. He was the best could've player been. for the first part yeah. of the season. Could have been. So I'm hoping and praying that he that he gets back in that team because I'll need him for week twelve. And also Emerson, um, he's a player that played. I think he played one or two games in a row before Wildcard. Mm-hmm. So I brought him in. And he plays left wing back in every European game. Mm-hmm. But then David Moyes just goes back to his four back and he gets kicked out of the team for the league. So like he is the minimum four mil, but it's uh it's a bit of a head scratcher what I'm gonna do with him. Cause he's playing tonight now as we speak against Anderlecht, left wing back. And it'd be just my luck then if I if I keep him for game week twelve and he doesn't start, you know, it's just a it's an automatic one pointer essentially. So a few few headaches, but uh nothing nothing too major. I feel like the the wild card was kind of and subsequent transfers were kind of planned well enough for, for game week twelve onwards. So 
Um, I think I'll be I'll be happy enough, even if I only have the ten players playing in that. I I I think I'll be okay. Nothing nothing yeah. a small uh, nothing a small minus or something can't fix. But we'll find out if it comes to the worst and Nico Williams and Emerson are out of favor by week twelve. Uh, the Reese James money could he could be downgraded to to maybe a, a four and a half mil and you know use the rest of that money to upgrade Nico Williams and Emerson possibly, but we'll see. Um I could well roll the transfer this week to get a bit more information, but uh depending on how how serious Reese James's injury is, I don't want to lose all the value on him as well. So we'll see. Surrey's yeah. Surrey's just after going off on me in the middle of that sentence. Speaking so. of uh, injuries as well, there's been an injury in the West Ham game. Um, so if any of you listening were looking to get Jared Ogbonna into your team, then uh, he said uh, they started mm. off with Jared, you know, just to give me mm. a little uh, wee heart attack. No, I, my <laughs> face just lost all of its colour there. It's one of the West Ham as well, Ben Rahama, cheeky yeah, pick. Yeah, saw that. Very, he did start the last game for West Ham, but no. Yeah, go there. Paqueta is Pack actually quite Christmas, good. Maybe. Yeah, yeah Paqueta is, is someone that I like. He's he's a very skillful player. But um... two pints of lager and a packet of crisps. Wow. Did you say you okay after that, man? To Jared and um, No, you scared, you scared <laughs> the absolute bejesus into me. Well, oh, I know, I know, God just sick. I know just the things that cheer you up, Adam. How about a nice wee trivia round? Absolutely. Um. I'll I'll just I'll just leave on this one. Um my one cheeky pick going forward, Kepa Ariza Balaga is seems to be in favour with Graham yeah. Potter. And he's an excellent keeper. I think he's maybe four point four point four mil or something like that. So if he's if if you you know have a bit of cash from a Nick Pope or someone you want to move into a Chelsea defence with nice fixtures. You obviously don't want to spend money on Kukurea, Chilwell, etc. Kepa, I think, is just a nice bargain option. And it'll let you kind of spread your funds about elsewhere. So that would yeah. be my cheeky pick now for the wrap-up segment too, whether whether anyone heeds my advice or not. But my housemate Niall actually um I suggested Kepa to him and he's been doing brilliantly for him since he came in. So Yeah, yeah I've seen some, that I've seen that he definitely brought him someone in. I was thinking of myself. If I need to move you know, if I need to upgrade Emerson or, or Nico Williams and I need a bit of extra money, then Pope might be the first man to go for him. I think it's a great shape, but I just worry about, um, yeah, you worry about Mendy, you know, taking his place at some point. Um, yeah, so good, definitely a good idea to have a playing backup yeah. keeper if you have him. I might upgrade definitely, yeah. Emerson I have, to, I have... to be honest, and then have him and Pope. Yeah, Iverson actually just doesn't seem to be getting anywhere near. He just seems <laughs> no. Brendan Rogers seems to be sticking with Ward. Well, if but if I also feel like Brendan Rogers is very soon from getting the sack. Oh yeah. Um there there were a lot of rumors from Leicester players or Leicester fans that he's actually on such like a complicated compensation package that it might be too expensive to sack him, but would um, not surprise me for one bit. With, yeah. With, so yeah, but though with those tie owners, I think they they probably have enough money to to chuck around. So, I think I think his days on in this uh, in the Premier League are quite numbered. But we'll see. It makes you makes you wonder though if <laughs> if Everson's not getting any game time, how bad must he be if Danny Ward's starting ahead of him every week? <laughs> you, but... <laughs> you really <laughs> have you really do have to wonder. Like this is um... he starts for Iceland, doesn't he? I feel like Danny Ward's going to have to get in the title of this YouTube video of lads for the way we're like going. Like you, you on, see so. him as well whenever the ball goes in. Like it's one he should be making a save, and he turns around with his big angry face, like shouting at people, and you're like, "You're just fucking standing ten yards to the left." It's like Barkas when West Ham scored against him. He's like standing over on the edge of the box, and you're yeah, <laughs> just looking at the ball go in. That's an obscure reference. Yeah. Uh, for, for some people, might not get that one right. Yeah, and well, any. any, like- any any Celtic or any any Irish Celtic fans that are watching will definitely will definitely resonate with that one. I'll, I'll get you the picture after this part. It's hilarious. <laughs> the picture will go up here in the video. He starts giving out and then turns back at an empty net, and you're just like, "All right, okay." <laughs> Anyways, I digress. Uh, that segment two wrapped up. Uh, thanks, Emil. We'll move on to our to our closer here with Paddy's Paddy's uh, popular trivia round. We Paddy's absolutely. We absolutely smashed it last week with the 
the kit manufacturers in the Premier League. We got all seven within the time limit, so hopefully we can replicate that again this week. Pat, what do you got for us? This one might be a bit more difficult. Um, How many blades nah. of grass are in the Etihad? To be fair, <laughs> Ryan's back this week, so he's the expert. You know, on this type our, of our, our knowledge, our knowledge has increased. John Michael is a praise as well. Hey, yeah, oh, John. Big time. John okay. is going to be good at these type of things. Okay, so it's a. This should be pretty straightforward up until the last, you know, few. So there's quite a there's there's a list of twenty here that you have to name. So wow. and you've only got three minutes to do it. So, so are uh, we going to? Uh, yeah. So the the order will be. Um, Aidan, Aidan, John, me. Aidan, John, you, and you take turns to give me a, a name, and then who will we will we'll try and get through all twenty? Lovely. Okay. Hopefully. Yeah. Let us quiz. Give, give us the give us the topic. Okay. So Mr. here's quiz the topic. Right? So the 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 first year fantasy football came into the existence was uh, the o two o three season. So. You'll need to give me all the teams that played in the Premier League that season. Oof. So all, I need all 20 Oof. clubs. Oof. That's a, that's you have to think of the classics. You have to think of the clubs you look at in like yeah. League One and stuff when you're like, they're Premier League clubs, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have to, what, do you, what do you think, lads? Do we stick with the with the do we, do we go with the obscure ones to start off with? For, yeah, I don't know. Or do we go we, obscure yeah, and then we go could to the... Start, we could no start time off to with the confer, because the, the clock starts oh. in three, two, one, go. All right, Man Sorry, United. Man United. Yeah. Arsenal. Arsenal, yeah. That's the Bolton top two. Bolton Wonders. Bolton is correct. Uh, Liverpool. Liverpool, yeah. Chelsea. Yep. Yeah. Tottenham. Tottenham, yeah. Um, Aston Villa. Yep. Newcastle. Newcastle, yeah, came third that year. Uh, Norwich. Norwich is incorrect. Oh, they oh, were wow. the year before, I think, maybe. Um, oh, Lord. Um, Leeds. Leeds is correct. I think Leeds, yeah. Okay. And Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough, right, yeah. Keep asking, that was mine. Uh, Blackburn. Blackburn, yeah, came sixth that year. Um, West Ham. West Ham, they are. Yeah, that's correct, but they did get relegated. This oh year. well. <laughs> Leicester. Nope. Uh, Fulham. Fulham is right. Yeah. Um, Southampton. Southampton yeah. is right. Yeah. Yep. Fly. Um, I think we're still up then. I'm trying to think if these two were up or they were down. I know they were up like a couple of years after. I need to. Uh, hmm. Birmingham. Birmingham, yeah. That's 15 now. Uh, Five left. Um, Good and bad. Uh, Charlton uh, Athletic. Charlton is right, yeah. Ooh, Everton. Everton, yes. Yeah, I was thinking Everton, we didn't wow. say that. Three, three more. Three, 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 off. three more, uh, and you bet a minute left. So should, should get the switch. I have switch. one, I think. Nope. Uh, Watford. Nope. Oh, they were two Char- years after. Charlton Athletic. That's who I said. No, that's who Ryan said. Oh, sorry. Okay. Um, who fucking else? Uh, Wolves. Oh, wrong. Incorrect. I have one, I think. Go on, John. Sunderland. Sunderland. Yeah. Wigan. Wigan. No. Nope. Oh. Oh, wow, was that? Uh, Newcastle? We said, I think. Uh, yeah, I've already said Newcastle. Oh, God. Uh, what else then? Okay. Um, Got 30 yeah. seconds. I'm oh, no, John. Oh, John Max gone. All right, B. He's away Googling. Try, 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 try. John, it's your go, man. I think. Just cut out there. All right. Turn on your camera, sure. Um, one second. Uh, West Brom. Yeah, West Brom. One left. You got oh uh, 10 God. seconds. Oh, I... Oh, I'm so bad at this. Um... <laughs> Last chance. Preston? We're gonna... I don't know. No. Right, John, Mac, you get one more go. If you get, if you don't get it, then you have failed. So when you were gone, I said West Brom, and that was the second to last one. So this is to get the 20th, and I'm going to probably kick myself for... Crystal Palace? Nope. 
All right, I'll go through. I'll go through the league and see if you can spot the ones that you missed. I'm very I'm, missed one. I'm very disappointed in this one that he's missed. All right, so Man United came first, Arsenal came second, Newcastle third, Chelsea fourth, Liverpool fifth, Blackburn, Blackburn sixth, sixth. Everton 7th, Southampton 8th, and then this team came 9th. 9th. Uh... Mate, it's going to be someone... It's gonna, I'm going to kick myself. Yeah, we're where's all going to kick We're all going to kick ourselves, man. You, you really Who'd you say, kick yourselves? Who'd you London say, John? Team. London team, is it? No. Wimbledon, no? No, Lads. that would have been man too City. early. You didn't say Man City, so there you John go. Said Man City. I said Man City, the first one. Did you? I'm gonna, I'm gonna need that. No, I'm you said United. Right you, said, you said United. You I'm didn't say. Pretty City. sure I said them. Go back I and look at the them. I thought one of them two said City, so that's why I didn't say it. I was yeah, like, oh, we've said I'm, City. There you <laughs> go. Sure you did, you didn't get City. Wow. No. Yeah, but that's I got Charlton Athletic, and that's all that counts. Yeah, that's a I killer. That was their first year in the city of Manchester Stadium as well. Yeah. There you go. So the three teams that got relegated that year were um, West Ham, West Brom, and Sunderland. Cool trivia. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Actually, yeah, think... for any for anyone that enjoyed the Sunderland till I die, apparently they're season reviving three is coming it. Out, yeah. Apparently they're reviving it for a season three this year, so that's good to see. I think they had Kevin Phillips that year, and maybe oh, Kevin Phillips or, 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 Matt, or Matt Phillips is it? Done called I, master two yeah. weeks ago. <laughs> two weeks ago, we were doing a trivia round. It was like Premier League is like Hat-tricks. most hat tricks, and I said Matty Phillips like a like an idiot. But anyways, uh, lads, thanks very much, Ryan, Patrick, the regulars. Appreciate you's coming on, uh, and our first ever special guest, John Mack. Give him a round of applause, lads. Woo. Good to see you. Thank Great you for coming there. on, John. And um, there's some exposure there as well. Um, I had a free reel up, and Andy Kelly was the first to comment to say. He's Guest appearance. Ah, <laughs> class, so, love it. So, the squad. The minus, the minus four pod is hitting all, uh, hitting all socials, all platforms. Yeah, and absolutely. And 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 on that as well. Um, if you're listening on Spotify, um, you know, give it a rating, give it a share, and uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, then please do comment down below. Um, you know, your team, what you what you think of our of our comments or any any just general. FPL questions. Do feel free to to give us a to give us a message on on any of those platforms. So I think that's about it, lads. Do you have anything else to add to that, or are we are we um, dust? I think. Oh, also, if a uh, if our number one fan on uh, the fantasy is still out there listening, she likes all of Adon's tweets anyway. And um, Brandy Dutton. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to you. Bra- Brandy is the bot that likes everything that I put up on Twitter. Um, there's some absolutely obscene stuff on her profile, so it's uh, she's been trying to lure me in, but not this time, Brandy. Not this time. Shout out. Try triple captain out, Holland. Try right, triple captain Holland and come back to me. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Anyways, that wraps it up. I hope everyone has a fantastic game week eleven. We'll be back next week with the. With the game week twelve blank game week special. So um until then, have a good weekend and uh we'll chat to you next week. All right. Bye guys. Bye. Bye.